The city of Charlottesville, Virginia is preparing for a grim anniversary. Sunday marks one year since the fatal Unite the Right rally. Officials say they'll be taking extra precautions this weekend. Plenty of police on the streets of Charlottesville and a state of emergency is already declared. What you can expect to see and what you can expect to engage is a very significant law enforcement presence in our community. And that presence is here as a support to our citizens. All this for the anniversary of the Unite the Right rally, which falls on Sunday. Tensions rose at the 2017 event. Off our streets, Nazis come! Off our streets, Nazis come! At one point, a car plowed into pedestrians who were protesting the white supremacists. 32-year-old Heather Hayer was run over and killed. A suspected neo-Nazi sympathizer was charged. Here is where my daughter was ripped away from me. Two Virginia State Patrol troopers were also killed in a helicopter crash as they were trying to bring calm to the area. Starting tonight, a secure perimeter will be established in downtown Charlottesville. That includes street closures and parking restrictions. Officials say they are monitoring various bits of intelligence regarding the city and ask the public to point out any possible problems. I would urge the citizens of Charlottesville and anybody else who is going to be visiting here is to continue to be vigilant. You can help deter some of these acts that might take place. Charlottesville officials turned down numerous permit requests for this weekend, including one for Unite the Right To. The group will have a rally Sunday afternoon in Lafayette Park here in Washington, D.C. Charlottesville is in the Diocese of Richmond, and the bishop there is reflecting on this weekend's anniversary. In a statement, Bishop Barry Nestout says, in part, It is my sincere hope that all remain safe in these coming days and throughout the weekend, and may the Holy Spirit be a source of strength and comfort for the families and friends who continue to mourn the loss of a loved one. Joining me now to discuss today's news is Kelly Jane Torrance, Deputy Managing Director for the Weekly Standard. Kelly Jane, welcome back to the program. Great to be here. Based on all your research, your publications, reporting, do you think the country's really begun to heal after this, or are we still as divided as ever? You know, I think it's mixed, Wyatt. I think in some ways we have, but keep in mind, it's not just a year later. Um, these are issues, the issues that were brought up in Charlottesville were really issues that have existed since before this country was founded. So that's, you know, a couple centuries of, of very difficult tensions and, and race issues. So those are not going to be, um, you know, solved overnight. And I have to say, you know, I'm a little worried about this weekend in D.C. As you mm. noted, one of the organizers of the Charlottesville rally ha has gotten a permit and will have an event here in D.C. And of course, so some people are going to be counter protesting. Mm. And in fact, Black Lives Matters um, is planning to burn a Confederate flag. And, you know, I worry you know, not to make all a pun. this may be right in front of the White House. Exactly. Yeah. And, no, you know, not to make a pun, but I do worry that could further inflame the situation because you're going to have some people very angry about about that sort of symbolism. And so, you know, I hope we can, the country can sort of make it through this weekend and really maybe be a little more thoughtful and, and reflect a bit. And, you know, those of us at home, not in part of the, the passionate thing, you know, think about what's going on and why someone had to give her life. I mean, we all hope that Heather Heyer didn't die in vain. Sure. Well, I know a lot of people are hoping for that. And I know a lot of our viewers will be praying for this weekend. We reported earlier on the situation in Turkey and President Trump doubling the tariffs there. Do you think he's doing the right thing? You know, I do. I'm, I'm not a fan of tariffs in general. Uh, but, you know, he has he had to do something, and uh, I think this was it. Uh, you know, the Turkish lira had already been spiraling, of course, and that is actually because of Pastor Brunin. This, you know, people have been worried, what is America going to do because they haven't been able to come to a deal? In fact, they thought they had a deal, and Israel actually released a Turkish woman who was accused of aiding uh, and funding Hamas, mm -hmm. and Turkey was supposed to let uh, Pastor Brunson go. They did not. And so Turkey is, I think, sending some messages to America. Last night, in fact, uh, Erdogan met with uh, the chief of staff to Iran's president, Hassan Rouhani, mm. and declared that they're going to do everything they can to stand with Iran against the U.S. sanctions. So I think Turkey's sending a message. And I think Donald Trump needed to send one back. And this, this is just the beginning, I think. Yeah, very troubling for the U.S. and its allies. Um, the Trump administration weighing in on another international crisis, Nicaragua, uh, today defending the Catholic Church there. President Trump has received um, a lot of criticism about his handling of international affairs in general. How do you think that the Trump administration is doing in general on global affairs? You know, that's an excellent question, Wyatt. I, I think it's a bit mixed, uh, personally. I think in some ways it's good. I'm glad we got out of the Iran deal, for example, because you had, basically that regime is a murderous, torturous regime. You have people on the streets actually 
as we speak, uh, I, I follow Iran a lot, and there's a footage, you know, people uh, chanting death to the dictator. They want a new government. And none of that money that they would get from, from dealing economically with other countries is going to the people. There's people who haven't eaten meat in over a year. And so I think he did a very uh, good thing there. And I think supporting, sending words of support to the freedom fighters of places like Iran is great. I'd like to see him maybe express more support for the freedom fighters of Nicaragua, of mm -hmm. Venezuela, others. Um, and, you know, maybe going on beyond moral support uh, would be good. But I do think it's a good first step to say, hey, you know, we're not going to be dealing with regimes that torture and murder their own people. Mm -hmm. And if you do, we're not going to do business with you. And I, you know, who can argue with that? People do, but I, I don't see how. Yeah, very good points. Kelly Jane Torrance, Deputy Managing Editor for the Weekly Standard. Thanks so much for your analysis. Thanks for having us. All right.